Okay, hello everyone, and thanks for clicking into this video. Um, today, what we're doing, we're hopefully going to be doing a catch and cook. I'm going to try to see if I can find a pigeon. I've got my Dutch oven, and I've got some other little stuff I want to test out. Um, a cold steel shovel, which I've just got for my birthday, and other couple of little things as well. So I thought I'd come out to my land, and um, it's been a while, it's been nearly a month since me and my son Jacob came out to build this debris shelter. Looking at it, it's still holding quite fair. It's quite dry underneath it. So, that, so um, even though it's made out of bracken, the bracken sort of died down, it's still dry underneath there. So it's actually really good just to store my stuff just for now before I actually set myself up. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna quickly set up the basher. I'm gonna set up the hammock for something to sit in. And then um, I'm gonna build myself a nice fire pit, dig a nice fire pit, collect some firewood, use my tinderbox, which I make and sell for it for eBay and all of my courses. We use that to actually light a nice fire. And then, as that's going around, we're gonna try to do a little bit of hunting around my area. I've got my catapult with me today. So we're gonna go around and also do a bit of foraging. Because it is um, autumn time, or the fall, if you're in the States, there's a load of um, sweet chestnuts laying around. So I'm gonna pick some of those up, see if I can find some wild garlic or anything like that around this area. And then cook it up inside the cook, inside the cook pot and have a nice little Roast lunch, roast pigeon lunch, that is on the menu. I've seen some squirrels around here at the moment. Um, I've seen some jackdaws and some crows and that sort of thing. There are some animals still around. It is raining all day today. And yesterday the temperature was 20 odd degrees. Today it's going to be raining and getting worse throughout the day. So hence I'm using the lesser cam. I don't want to get in the DSLR out and get that damaged and wet because it's too much money to damage. But I'll set it up, once the basher's up, I'll set it up inside the basher. I'm going to find a nice little area around here now, just to, just to string it up, and then we'll see what we actually day brings. Okay, so the top is now up. I've got a hammock to sit on, which is quite nice. So I can just chill out, lay, listen to the, listen to the wind, listen to the rain. I love listening to the rain on the, when it's on, on tents or cameras above you. It's just it's nice, satisfying noise that it's raining, but yet you're dry. I've done a square for fi um, configuration. I'm using my DD three x three. I've got it so uh, the longer end sort of sticks down behind me and is up on the front, so it's open. Luckily for me, that I've actually got like 10 meters of cord on each corner so I can just really, really lay my lines out, which are quite far. I was gonna use some stakes and stake them up, but I realized how long my lines actually were. Um, just laid it out really, really far. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get myself a little brew on the go using a small gas wood burning stove. But I've also, as I said, my wife got me a nice, lovely, brand spanking new coal steel shovel uh, on, on, the, on my birthday a couple of days ago on Monday. Um, but this thing is awesome. I haven't used it yet, but I've seen so many reviews, so many people talk about them. Uh, it's sharpened on the edges, so you can use it as an axe. So I'm going to be t testing that in a little bit as well. I've even seen people use them as throwing, throwing axes as well. I do a little bit of throwing, throwing axes, so it might be quite fun to play with. But also a digging tool, which is going to work really, really well today because I brought out my Dutch oven, in which I want to hopefully try to do a little bit of catapult hunting around my area, see what I can find and then cook it up inside a Dutch oven with a little um, little gadget, gadget I found at the charity shop for 20p um, yesterday as well. So we're going to clear a little area, get my little wood, wood gas stove on, make, make, make a quick brew and then once that's cooking that I'm going to cook. I'm going to dig a fire pit just in front of me and then start foraging for some wood, dry, dry deadfall around this area and see if I can get a nice fire to go and see, then see if I can catch some lunch as the fire's brewing up try and try and catch some lunch so a little go that is useless
Okay, so we've collected some firewood. Annoyingly, the wind's sort of circling around this area. Um, it was coming this way, but gently, but so often you get gusts coming straight towards you because it lifts the tarp up a little bit. But other than that, we're good. We're going we're to get um, a little brew on first, and then we're going to go cut our. Oh, we're going get to get the Dutch oven on the go, heat, start heating it up in preparation. Because I have seen loads and loads of pigeons and sort of roosting around here. So um, we'll get that on the go, get that heated up, and then there will forage. Because, um, my wife also bought me a nice little foraging pouch. Yeah, this is a um, Torbon, Torbon sort of pouch. It holds my, cat, holds my catapult in here. I've got a... What, what we... Okay, so we're using the Barnet Hunter. It says on the thing that this is the most powerful slingshot in the world. I don't really think that is that powerful myself. I've used it a lot better, but that's the one we're using today. Uh, we're going to go out and we're gonna take a few practice shots at the moment. I'm using 12mm balls. Yeah, so hopefully I'm going to get a few. I'm going to fire a couple of just to get my eye in. And then um, once I've done that, we'll go out for a little foraging around and see what we, see what we can get hold of. Or if not, I'll just go have roast chestnuts. So... That's the thing, sort of. I'm now going to get the little gas burner stove up and running. I thought I had it with me here, but um, it's not. It's obviously inside my bag still. So let's have a quick look inside there to try to locate it. There it is. Yeah. So there's my little stove. I only got. I only paid a ten. It's only a Chinese one. It's quite heavy, actually, for what it actually is. You see, brand spanking new, never been used before. So I'm going to set this thing up and then we'll get that lit. So we'll be back in a few secs. is a large sign on his left proclaiming Gunflint Lake, elevation 470 meters, BWCAW-Quetico, Minnesota-Ontario. Like everything else in this place, it reminds him of outdoor adventure. He continues across the narrow courtyard and steps over a footbridge. An artificial waterfall cascades over stones into a small pool. On this late fall day, the water is littered with yellow birch leaves. Lovely jubbly hazelnut coffee in a wood where I'm going to collect some hazelnuts later on.
smells lovely. This is just right now because it's getting a little bit cold out here. Um, it's own. What's it? Quarter to eleven. No, quarter to twelve. So um, need to start firing some some food in a little bit to have some lunch. Get this fire pit dug. But the, what, what you saw them trying to get that lit, all the wood is so wet and damp around here. Um, so I think I'm going to need to venture in into the woods because I'm in a, in a clearing at the moment. So I need to venture into the woods a little bit further just to find a little bit more drier wood because. I've just dried some birch bark out, you saw me sort of over the fire, just to try to get a little bit of um, dryness ready for next time. It took a... I didn't use this properly, I tried to be a bit sparingly with the um, resources, trying to make it a bit last. Really I should have used a bit more, because the wood is wet out here, I should have used a little bit more of my emergency tinder sort of stuff really inside that. I, I tried to use the bare minimum of fat wood, that didn't work, so what I did in the end I pulled a little bit of... um cotton wool out of one of the straws and, and just to try to help it go along a little bit more to give it more heat to get some of that damp birch bark a lit. Finally I gave in and used a bit of the dry birch bark which is already inside there. There's, there's a, quite a big bit. I ripped it in half and then ripped it in half again and used two bits and that, that worked really really well. What you heard in the background was I um, downloaded the Audible app and it's every so often when I come out and I'm on my own. It's just quite nice um, if there's no other noises or wildlife to listen to, I tend to I sometimes turn a book on and do a little bit of work and have that in the background. It just keeps you company. But it's just a nice thing to have. Okay, right. Well, just gone for a little walk around to see if I can find any more dry wood and there's a pigeon literally just next to the camp. So I'll turn the camera around now. So inside that tree there, you can't really see it from this angle over here, it's a pigeon perched up quite high up. I'm going to try to get close and um, see if I can get a shot at it with um, a catapult to see if I can actually take it out. So let's have a look. Let's move around really gently. See if we can take it out. Yes, let's go get it. Took about three shots. I, I missed the first couple, but it just stays stationary because it didn't hit anything nearby. So, I'm not the best cat pulp person. I was lucky I actually hit it myself. There we go. All the feathers. And, um... They all, oh, they all she lay. So we'll get that and, um... Uh, let's get this and we'll take this back. And we'll prepare that in a bit. We'll put it in the pot for now, out of the way. So no one else gets it and... <laughs> yes! We've got lunch! How good's that? Hello, thank you very much. So we're gonna go now we definitely get a pot on the go. I'm not just eating that is sweet chestnuts now, we've actually got something to eat. So we're gonna walk around the woods. I'll just leave. I'll say I'll just put this in here. Open up this pot. Put up that pot there. Let's put that bird in there. And my gash bag. Uh, I should put the gash bag in there as well. Right, so I'm now going to head off. 
zoom out. That's the adrenaline's still going, I forgot to zoom out the camera. Yeah, so I'm going to head off over there now. There's some pine trees just there, there's some birch over there. So I might find some more dry birch and more pine trees. Um, I get some, because pine burns quite quickly, so I might better find some down pine. I've got my saw with me, I've got my little foraging bag with me. I'm also going to go over to those woods over there because that's where the hazelnuts are. But it's starting to rain again, so I'll put the waterproof jacket back on and we'll go back out and see what we can get. Well, the amount of rain we've had over the last few days, this little stream is starting to fill back up again, but it's never really been decent water in here. What I might do, I might come down with a big shovel one day and actually dig it all out because you never know. Because I get a few live straws and that sort of stuff, you might be able to filter this and boil it up. And um, it's only, I'm only in the woods, there's no dangerous parasites or anything around here at all. It's just murky water, the amount of leaves and that. So I think if I can really come down here and dig, dig this channel out on, on my land little area, and um, so it goes all the way through the woods, I think it might actually good, make a good visible water source and a good filter. Okay, so I've actually got one of my sweet chestnut trees near the area. You, you can tell it's a sweet chestnut for a couple of reasons. You've got the fruit itself, the nuts are inside these spiky little bits over here. So uh, they're quite hard to get out. Um, I tend to sometimes put them on a hard serve and hit them with a stick a couple of times or roll them around. You can even use your foot if you want to to roll up all the spikes and get them out. So that's that was one way to get them out. You can tell as well by you get the bark. Nice sort of lines, straight lines of the bark. But the most common sort of thing people always go by is the leaves. Yeah, they come off this sort of typical leaf shape is what you expect to see with the veins coming on. Underneath you can see all the veins, big little lines, was waxy on the top. So we're gonna have a look around here. Oh, I've got a friend look. Hello boy. I don't know who this is, but we'll say hello to him. Want to come over and say hello? See, it's wonderful what you can find inside the woods, isn't it? Just looking around. Always man's best friend. Okay, so the dog's finally gone. I've done the rummage around here. This is what I've found. And there's one little tree. So we're going to open these up now and see what state these in. A lot of the, quite a few of the chestnuts at this time of year in October. They're still quite white inside and that's fully mature, so I might have one or two inside here, there might be none. So we're going to open these things up. The hardest thing is actually open them up. So what I'm thinking, because I've got quite a few here, I'm going to just run my boot over the top of it just to try to split them up a little bit, um, roll them around on the ground, and then it might open up a few things. And I've got my multi-tool with me and I can open up a little bit more. So let's have a quick look and see what happens. So I'm just going to... Just ruffle them up a little bit with my boot. It might sort of um, open a few up. I don't know how the squirrels do. I need to really film the squirrels because you're always in, in competition. Because they do hurt when you're spiking on them. So, do you know what? I don't think it worked one bit at all. No, that did not work whatsoever. So, there you go, plan B stamp on them. These ones are not opening up whatsoever, so I'm going to have to play a little thing. You get my knife out and start prying them open, so I'll see you in a sec. I didn't think I'd best record. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually in the process of building a uh, Dakota fire pit. I say the top part, top couple inches of the ground was really wet and full of um, roots. But you go down, and I'm now in solid, dry sort of chalk and limestone. So I'm going to get it deep enough and wide enough so I can put my Dutch oven inside there. And then I'm going to build another pit just here, and then link them up so it's got some airflow coming inside. So I'm going to do another probably half a foot deep down there then I'll do another little thin channel here just to, to suck some air. I think with this root structure it might just end up being a channel 
instead of a, a proper tunnel, it might just be an airflow sort of channel coming in instead of two pits and an airflow. But we'll see what happens. We'll keep digging, and then um, but it's full of rocks, and it's actually not that easy to get through. There's so many roots, and it's quite dry, and um, and um, I'm now in sort of a really big area. I've got to use this shovel like oh. I'm even making sparks inside here as well, so with the flint. So I'll cut my way through the flint at the moment as well. Yeah, so I know I've got a steel so I know I've got a steel um, shovel. Because I've got the flint and steel on the go. So let's just make a little wall up on the outside. Probably going to be as deep as I can get it, I think. That should, that should be sufficient. Just level it out. I know nothing's going to catch fire down there because it's just. I'm now. I'm now like really coarse sandstone trying to dig through. So. I'm going to level out the square, make it a bit more of a square inside. Um, I think next time I come down here, I'll bring a grate, I think, and I think I might use this pit and put a grate over the top of it. And I think that'll work really, really well in future videos. But that's a nice space. I'll, come over there. I'll bring the camera now and let you have a quick look at what we've got down there. You see there all the, all the soil sort of digging outside. When I move some of this that you can see underneath here, you've got all the sandstone and chalk. You can see how deep it is just by looking at the shovel. So it comes, comes about that much on my sh about that much on the shovel. So We'll just probably leave that bit in there, we'll just smooth it out a little bit. I'm now just giving it a little channel so I can get some air into the pit. Okay, so if you're not really sure how to cut a fire pit works, basically it's like a stealth fire or covert fire or when there's really, really high wind and it keeps putting the fire out, you need to dig it underground. But when you dig it underground, you're not going to get enough oxygen. So that's why we do a cut a fire pit. So my fire base will be inside of this pit, which is quite a big pit. I'm going to dig it out a little bit wider in a sec, depends on how I feel. And then to give that oxygen, we do a second hall and then a tunnel underneath the ground. And what it does, the fire needs oxygen that sucks it in. You know, if, you, if, if you listen to it, you can actually hear the air roaring through the tunnel as it's coming through, as the, as the fuel is sucking this oxygen in. Which lends later to put grates on the top, cook on the top, and don't worry about starving it from oxygen because it's always sucking it through, through that sort of tunnel itself. It's really, really good. It keeps the smoke down because it makes such a hot fire, so it's hard any smoke. Good for cooking, good for bad wind, also bad weather as well. You can keep the fire out of most of the elements by when you cover it up. Once you get it going, that's it, you are well away. So this is what I built here. When I finish this, I'm going to put some wood over the top of it just to keep it, keep it sort of safe. And that'll be ready for me for the next time I come down here in high wind. And I'll probably build a bit of wall around the outside, get some stones and build it up at a later date. But for now, this is good enough for what I need to do my next task. I'm going to get a fire going in here and then we'll come back with the, with the, with the oven on once we we'll get the roaring on the go. So we've got our cotton wool and some Vaseline inside my tin this time. Just gonna get the just gonna get it out.
because everything's wet. Everything here is wet today. So we need to carefully get all this out. open. Also the plastic which the straws in is also really good as well. So these are like emergency survival fire lighting kits. So we've got all the cotton wool inside there and we've put some Vaseline on there as well which is going to really help that. Put that down there so I lose it in the wind. Let's get this fast, let's get this on. Get that open. Some Vaseline onto this, or petroleum jelly, whatever you want to call it, and um, that is going to really, really help. Rubbish can go in there as well. That's going to really, really help that go. And I can place that into there, and I've also got some dry birch. I've got some fat wood. I've got all sorts of stuff in here because it is so wet today. I'm going to need to use a lot of lot of my supplies inside the tin but that's what the tins are for that's what tinder kits are for they're there to be used they're not there to just look pretty in times times like this when the weather's hard when it's not easy to do things you need to think out of the box you need to be able to be able to use your resources so these matches in here strike anywhere matches i mean they will strike i mean they will strike anywhere but what we're going to do now, we're going to light. Oh, I've got the gotten stuff now down my little hall. Like that, and then let's get this thing on the go. Oh, oh drop that into there, Pete. Let's try and get all this. Use some fat wood as well. Got some more fat wood. Let's get that. Let's get the fat wood on the go. That will help me get this fire. I mean, when times are hard, you've got to use your resources. You can always replace them. Resources can always be replaced. But when you need the fire, you've got to use them. Get some of these little twigs dried. It's just you've got to be really careful at the start. I've got some more birch bark here. Let's get some more birch. That's what I picked up earlier on. Let's get that in here. It's a case of now just, just getting stuff into the fire. 
getting it burning. Let's try and get some of this into there a little bit more. Let's try and get some of this stuff on the outside, actually into the fire, because at the moment it's only concentrated in the centre. So I need to get it to start spreading. See what I'm doing, I'm putting the bigger stuff on the top and I'm feeding this little stuff underneath the bottom, inside, and the little stuff is what's going to be, dries a lot quicker. A bit like using the, the, the little stove I used to cook my food earlier on. That they burn a lot quicker, but then it's allowing me to get this bigger stuff dry. And that is, that is the aim. But it's sucking the air in, just keep, so I've got all the fuel on the top, and it's sucking the air in. I've got some heat coming off that now, and it's, I reckon in about five, 10 minutes, I'm gonna have a really, really good fire um, for cooking in on this little system. There we go, look at this, look. Roaring, roaring fire. And this is all wet. All the wood I'm using is wet. Okay, so what, if you're not sure how, how, how to do pigeon sort of thing, the main, the only real main meat on the pigeon is actually the breast itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my um, little knife I use and change the battery of this camera. So the first thing I need, I need to do with um, the pigeons is just cut off all the breast hair. Yeah, so because I've got a fire, they seem to be bunk in the fire just to get rid of them. If not, they're going to be everywhere. You want to try to get yourself into the breast area itself. By just taking all of the breast hairs off. Oh, so damp wood. I just love it. Oh. That's a new position. Yeah, so once you've, once you've got your... Oh, smoke. I think, uh, do you know what I think it is? I think it's the hairs on the phone. I think it's the feathers on the phone on the fire. So once I've exposed the breast, the breast itself, and then I use I always use my opener as my little chopping knife. Stainless steel so it doesn't rust. And all I'm gonna do then is just slice down down the breastbone. Careful not to go all the way down. I'll do that on both sides. Look at this nice, rich red meat. You don't get a lot, you need quite a few pigeons really to... Yeah, I can then start peeling back some of the skin. Oh, it smoke. Peel back some of the skin. Yeah, so all I do then, I'll just... Just take the skin off a little bit, just every so often just need to nick it off. Take it all the way down. All this fat on the back of the bird, you can see why I hit it with the, the catapult, it's like really sort of done him in. Take it all the way down. so I can remove the breast. Here we are, so there's one breast, which is just there. I'll just leave it on the wings just for now, so I'll know where it is. And I'll do the same on the other side. And then using my poster I've got on my mug at the moment. I'm what I'm planning to do is place that inside the Dutch oven so, so, that, so the breast doesn't get stuck on the bottom, it allows a little bit of airflow. And then from there I can then roast 
roast the bird inside the Dutch oven. I think it's going to be a nice little different way of cooking the bird. I could skew it and put it over the fire. But that's, that's no fun. I'm going to try it out. Try a different method of cooking it. There's hairs everywhere. Look. There they are, inside a little tin. And we're going to get the lid. And then, we do, we put the lid on, on the top. And then what we'll, do, we'll get my shovel. I'm going to take some of these burning logs and place that onto the top of my onto the top of my pan. Get some of these embers. Ooh, it's hot in there. Let's get a mug. Let's get a cup. Let's get a cup. Let's get a um. Let's get a glove. We get some of these embers and we'll put some of them on top of here. Oh, look at that, look. Woo -hoo -hoo, yeah! Well, let's put that down there. We'll leave that <coughs> half an hour or so. Okay then, so I've underestimated the Dutch oven. Around about 20 minutes ago I checked, I checked on the meat and it wasn't cooked whatsoever. Put some more wood on it, sat around for 20 minutes, saw some steam coming out of it, I thought, oh, what's going on in there? I looked inside, smoke went everywhere and I mean the meat is no longer to be seen. It's cooked, it's dissolved yeah, inside there itself. So I don't know what happened in there, but but you can see, I'll get the camera now, you can see where the meat was. Yeah, that, that is what's left of my, um, the two bits of breast meat, which just disintegrated. It, I opened it up and there was nothing there, but we do have our, um, our chestnuts, so we're gonna eat the chestnuts. I'd managed to rescue a small piece of meat, you can see there, cooking on a kebab sort of stick off the run off the carcass which I didn't actually take all off so I'm just going to roast that so I still have a little bit of um of food so I've still got a little bit of food but other than that um, I now know to check on that a little bit more regularly but first impressions of the oh it's a bit hot there I didn't want to burn burning ground with a cast iron thing the first impressions of it though worked really really well. I just need to keep a bit more eye on it because once it's hot, it just gets stupid hot. It takes ages to get to it, but then when it is, it's there straight away. But lessons learned. I'm going to sit down with my little snack now. A bit like it's like a survival day. It's just a bushcraft training day sort of coming out. I'm going to move this and sort of burn in the grass again. Just put that on the dirt out of the way. So I'm going to put the lid on on this just to keep it a little bit warm. I think. My meat is practically done, so I'm going to put that in there just to keep it warm as well. Yeah, so that that's done. Let's just put now a little bit longer actually. Oh no no no! Nearly dropped it. That that would just be bad news, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah I think that's done. We'll put, we'll put that in there. We'll put the lid back on it just to keep some warmth in. Got the warm on the top still from the coals. The fire. The fire pit. Such good piece, yeah. Such a good bit of engineering. It's just it had a raging fire. Um, heat is coming off this is immense. Um, I'm putting wet wood straight off the floor into this thing now. In a matter of minutes, it's dry and it's cooking sort of over there. But I'm just to quickly go get a plate so I can then sit there and tuck into all my um into my little bit of food, and then I'll let this thing die out. Find some way of protecting it. So I can use it again next time I come here and that's about it so okay so I've just gone and cut this bit of birch off the fallen limb and then um, let's, I'm gonna see what this cold steel shovel is like and try and split it in half just so I can um, get a nice plate 
So that, that is the mission. So we'll see what it's like. Let's watch out for my line above me. I'm going to use it over here, like a like two-handed axe. Okay. <laughs> first, first hit wasn't very good, really, was it? Sort of scrimmed it off. Right. Let's try again, shall we? Okay, not doing what I thought it might do. So, try and stand up this time. That's better. Okay, so what it's doing, it's splitting it down the side, but now I've got this piece of wood in the way, and that, I can't actually go any further. So, there we go. One split piece of wood. Good enough for a little plate. And we'll leave this for it to dry later on. Yeah, cold steel. Thank you. Oh. Here we go then. So, first chestnut. Crispy. A bit slightly overcooked, but quite nice. A bit of meat. Yeah, pigeon and chestnut go together really really well it does taste really really nice so I'm going to sit here and eat my small little scraps of burnt offerings which I've cooked up myself for myself inside my Dutch oven now I know it cooks so quick it's unbelievable when you get it up to when you get it up to temperature that Keep an eye on it. But hey, every day, is a tr every day is a school day, as they say. But I recommend trying it. A bit of pigeon, sweet chestnuts, cooked in a Dutch oven. It's a lovely little snack. That's it, I'm going to leave it here for now for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. It's been a learning curve for myself. It's been fun doing it. It's been a long time coming, I do know. But I've been saying I've been meant to be going outside in the woods for some time now. It's just um, other commitments and workload haven't allowed me to do it. Things have changed now. Everything's on the up, so. I've got a lovely bit of land which I've got access to now so I've still got my shelter in that river there I've got this little bit here I've now got this area here uh, between the two trees I've got my fire pit just over there itself so I'll come back I can use the same thing again because I know it works I'm just going to do a little bit more work around here I'm probably going to build some sort of do some foraging and take some down limbs and I'll make a, a bit of a wind break this time sort of coming round quite fence this area off make it look nice when I come here all I'm going to do is just string up a string up a tarp and just build a shelter I think it'll probably be the best thing over here over over the coming sort of few months come down I've got a fire pit already on the go so it's nice and quick and easy what I'm going to do though I'm going to probably bring a, a grate down and leave the grate down here so I can just cook up some simple little meals and opportunity targets what have come around so thanks again Thanks for all this, um, if you like this video, put a like down below, comments, anything you do, or how, how, I, how you thought I went. But just remember, if there's to be one with a the wilderness, then fight and struggle. Until the next video, see you then. Bye for now.